It's time for nodal analysis in AC. So, if you've watched my video on nodal analysis, which I will put a little card up up there if you want to watch that, um, you'll know that I have a nice little acronym, AAS, for performing nodal analysis, uh, or ES. Uh, Nodal analysis, those uh, steps are assign, apply, solve. Uh, I need to add exactly two uh, steps for AC. So the first step is to convert everything to uh, phasers, and the last step is to convert everything back to the time domain. Um, and so uh, let's uh, make sure we write that down. Uh, P is uh, phaser domain. That's what it stands for. Uh, A is assign node voltages. Uh, I'll remind you that we also assign ground. Um, and we know that uh, current goes from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Um, and we're going to assume that V1 is bigger than V2 is bigger than V3 bigger than all the way down to ground. Uh, whether or not that's true, I don't care, but that's what we're going to do. Um, the next A is to apply, and in particular in nodal analysis, I'm applying Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, S is to solve for the node voltages. And T here is go to the time domain. Now, there are situations in which I don't go back to the time domain or I don't need to switch to the phaser domain. If I start in the phaser domain and I don't ask for a time domain answer, then it's fine to stay in the phaser domain at the end. Uh, but we are going to do our very best uh, to do this neatly. All right, we're using the exact same uh, techniques as DC. Um, the only note I have for you before we do an example is that your calculator does not typically, depending on the calculator you have, it does not typically accept complex or imaginary numbers within matrices. And so if you want to solve multiple equations, multiple unknowns using matrices, you can't do that with complex numbers. So you're going to need other tools to use the matrix method. Uh, two big tools come to mind. My favorite, which is MATLAB, uh, alternately Python. Um, I actually have some Python code that we can use for this. Uh, and so I'll show you that at the end of this video. Uh, and also make sure I put a link to that code uh, where you can find it in the description below. All right, so let's do uh, our first example probably our only example for this lecture. All right, so let's find IX. So find the value of IX, specifically IX of T, using nodal analysis. Here's my circuit. I've got a 10 cosine 5T volt source. Uh, I'll put plus minus just so that way you know. Uh, how that is defined. I've got a 5 ohm resistor, a 0 0.2 farad capacitor, um, a 2 Henry inductor, a dependent current source with a value IX, and then uh, in parallel with that I've got a nice one Henry inductor. Uh, and then I'm also going to define the value that sets IX as the current through that 0 0.2 farad capacitor. All right, so solution. Step one, P. Sounds like a personal issue. Uh, but P, convert to phasers, or phasers. Uh, 10 cosine of 5T converts to 10 angle zero degrees, where omega is five radians per second. 
Then uh, I'll convert 0 0.2 farad uh, to negative j over uh, 5 times 0 0.2. That's conveniently minus j1 ohms. And then 1 Henry converts to j omega l, uh, or j times 5 times 1, which is j5. And 2 Henry converts to j times 5 times 2, or j10 ohms. So now we could redraw this circuit accordingly. The next step is to rewrite the circuit using the phasers I have. So what I'm going to do is attempt, uh, probably poorly, to copy this and then paste it down here just to save myself a little bit of effort on the drawing. As I said, probably poorly. We'll clean that up a little bit. All right, so I know my one Henry becomes a J five ohm. I know that my two Henry's becomes a J10 ohm. Five stays the same. Uh, this one over here becomes 10 angle zero degrees, plus or minus. Um, and I know I've got five ohms, like I said, stays the same. Uh, this becomes negative J1. And I can rename this as and let's get the appropriate, nope, the appropriate color here. Uh, let's call this IX. Okay, so now I've got that. Uh, I know I've done the first step of nodal analysis, which is switch to phasers. Step two is to assign. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that here. I'm gonna call this one V1, because I know that this is just 10 angles, zero degrees. So let's call that one V1 phaser, and this one V2 phaser. Um, and I'll also catch the fact this should just be IX phaser. IX phaser is right there. Um, and then I also, I've missed one thing. I need to define ground, I'll do that. Uh, and I'll remind you that the way that I like to do nodal analysis is that I'm going to assume uh, 10 angle zero is bigger than V1, is bigger than V2, is bigger than zero. So I know I've got currents, let's say a current there, uh, which is, uh, let's call that I source to one, uh, current here, I one to two, current here, which I'll call I one to zero. These ones can remain as IX in and out. All right, so now I move to step three, which is to apply. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff's current law at each node. Let's start with node number one. Coming in, I have IS1. Going out, I have I, uh, and if I'm being really good about this, these are phasers. My goodness. All right, so I've got I S1 minus I X minus I one to two equals to zero. So for I S1, I know that I've got 10 minus V1. So the higher voltage minus the lower voltage divided by the impedance in between, that's five uh, minus V1 minus zero over negative J1 minus V1 minus V2 over J10 equals to zero. All right, first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm gonna move any J terms to the numerators. So here we go, I've got 10 minus V1 over five, uh, negative J, in the denominator becomes uh, a positive J up here. So I've got uh, minus J V1. Uh, that's because uh, one over J is equal to negative J, which means that one over negative J is equal to J. Okay, so then I've got minus a negative J V1 minus V2 over 10 
uh, these negatives become a plus. This is equal to zero. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by 10. So I've got uh, 20 minus V1 times two minus J V1. times 10 plus J V1 minus J V2 equals zero. Okay, so let's collect our terms together. I've got 20 minus um, what looks like uh, two plus J 10 minus J V1 minus J V2 so if I collect that together this is uh, 20 on one side that's equal to 0 20 on one side uh, on the other side I've got 2 plus J 9 B1 plus J1 V2. That's my first equation with my set of two unknowns. All right, now for something completely different. Let's look at node two. Oh wait, that's not different at all. We're just gonna repeat the exact same thing except at node two I've got I1 to two coming in, IX coming in, and I1 to zero coming in. So uh, I1 to two coming in plus IX coming in minus I2 to zero equals to zero. All right, I1 to two I already said was V1 minus V2 divided by um, some magic, J10 uh, plus IX, uh, IX, I know is just the same as uh, I did it right here. It's uh, J V one. So this is plus J V one. All right. So plus junior varsity one uh, minus I two to zero, which is just equal to uh, V two over J five, which is if I go up here, the impedance there equals to zero. All right, same trick I played as last time. I moved the J's to the top, so I got minus J up here, V1 minus V2 over 10 plus J V1. Uh, if this is a plus J and I move it to the top, I get uh, minus J and the minuses will cancel, cancel out. So I've got plus J V2 over five equals zero. Uh, if I multiply everything by 10, again, I've got negative J V1 plus J V2 plus J V1 plus J2 V2 equals to zero. I notice there is a J in every term here. So let's go ahead and cancel the J's out. When I cancel the J's out, I've got V1 plus V1. Oh, I forgot to multiply this through by 10 here. Uh, so, so plus V1 times 10 plus 1V2 plus 2v2 equals to 0. So that becomes uh, nine v1 plus 3v2 equals to 0. Sorry, that was uh, poorly done. All right, so let's summarize. I've got two equations, uh, this one which is 2 plus J9V1 plus J1V2 equals 20, and I've got 9V1 plus 3V2 equals to zero. We can solve this algebraically if we want. Um, you're welcome to do that uh, if you like, uh, but what I would encourage you to do is understand the following. Um, 
I can represent these using matrices. Um, so step four is to solve. I can represent these using matrices. And in fact, the matrix representation of this one is two plus J nine, J one, nine, three, multiplied by the vector V one, V two is equal to 20 and zero. All right, I said earlier in this lecture that I could uh, use matrix form to solve. So if I call this A, X, and B, then uh, A inverse times B is equal to X. Um, but I can't use a normal calculator. I need to use something like MATLAB or Python. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that here in a moment, uh, but I want to actually get my answers. So I'll tell you what the results are um, and then I'll show you at the end how I got them. All right, so the results are this. Um, I find uh, 3.16 angle negative 71.56 degrees is equal to V1 and V2 is equal to 9.49 angle 108.8 four degrees volts. All right, so I'm not actually done with this because I asked for I, well, specifically for IX, but IX phaser is just going to be V1 over minus J1, which is equal to V1 over one angle negative 90 degrees. Um, measured in amps. This is equal to 3.16 angle negative 71.56 de degrees over one angle negative 90 degrees. Um, in order to uh, combine these, I will take negative 71.56 minus minus 90. So this is equal to 3.16 angle 18.44 degrees amps. Now, the final step, 5t, is go back to the time domain. And so I'll just convert this into the time domain. It's 3.16 cosine of 5t plus 18.44 degrees amps. Uh, that's I X of T. All right, now, as I promised, I'm going to show you in Python uh, how I get this, and then I'll uh, definitely make sure to link to my Python code in the description. In the meantime, I will show you my MATLAB version of this code. Um, all I've got to do is run this program, uh, but it's going to uh, make all the calculations for me. So it asks me to enter an A, a matrix, so I'll enter the same A matrix I had, uh, and then ask me to enter a B matrix, um, and it returns uh, for V1 the magnitude and phase, and for V2 the magnitude and phase, which are consistent with what I had. In Python, uh, here's my uh, code. Uh, it does much of the same stuff, uh, maybe not quite as well rounded as the MATLAB version, uh, but it does some of the same things. Um, and this is where I enter my A and B matrices. So let's start with uh, two plus uh, nine I, or I guess tor times nine J, sorry. Um, uh, minus, uh, well, so the next one is uh, one J, and then the next one is nine, and then the next one is three. And then I'll enter in my B matrix. Uh, B is 20 comma, or 20, yeah, 20 comma zero. All right, and then I can go ahead and run this code. Um, and it returns a, a little vector here uh, where V1 uh, magnitude is uh, 3.16 with an angle negative 71 uh, and then 9.48 with an angle 108.4. Again, consistent with the things that we saw. So using this tool, uh, you should be able to solve 
matrices in uh, Python or MATLAB, and you can use that along with the nodal analysis techniques we already know. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching.